Hello everybody, Avacisten here, and in this video I want to tell you about my absolute favourite companion app to Avid Media Composer. It's a really cool media management app that allows you to scan uh, all of the media in the Avid Media Files folders of a drive or a number of drives at once, and then filter all that content by parameters like uh, whether it's audio files only, uh, by what Avid project they were created in, uh, whether they were imported in Avid, uh, by any basic metadata like the name of the clip in the bin, the kind, the compression frame rate, as well as Avid bins. Yes, it actually allows us to filter all the content on our drives by media that's referenced in an Avid bin, you know, including the sequences in that bin or a series of bins. You know, which is the primary way that we organize it within our projects. So it makes it really the easiest way to isolate media in the file explorer. Plus, of course, once we've isolated all this media by, you know, any parameter that we want to use, we can then copy it elsewhere, we can delete it, or we can move it to wherever that we like, making it really the perfect app for um, transferring media to another edit station that's just relevant for a specific project or sequence. Um, archiving Avid projects um, by gathering all the media related to just one specific project, or even thinning out your Avid Media Files folder by isolating just the media from old uh, projects that you don't particularly need anymore, even just pre-computes, renders that you definitely don't need, and deleting those. Hell, we can even isolate just the new media from an updated sequence by comparing two bins of holding the same sequence but one with an updated version of that sequence, and isolate our, our selection to just the new files that have been added since the old send, allowing us to very easily update remote teams of editors who are working on the same project as us, um, or, or VFX studios, um, or anybody else they might be collaborating with, with just the new media since you since you last um, you know updated them. It's really, really amazing, and it's completely free to use. It's made and maintained by an individual Avid editor who originally created it for their own use and has uploaded it for anyone to download and use at their will. Now, after hearing all of this praise straight off the bat before the videos really began, if you're wondering exactly what the catch is with this amazing and very versatile and free application, then <coughs> you're right, there is one little catch, and that is that this app is available on macOS only. Yep, sorry Windows users, MDV is only available on the Mac, but before you get all mad and grab your pitchforks to go after this Apple-loving company of full of Apple fanboys that didn't make the app for your beloved platform, just remember that the app was made by an Avid user, mostly on their own, and while they did copyright the software as theirs, that is, theirs they own it, they've offered it out to everyone to use completely for free in any commercial setting they like. So with that in mind, it's pretty unfair for us to put on any kind of expectations on them when it comes to freeware, and we just have to be grateful. So with that in mind, for the benefit of anyone who will be using Avid in a macOS environment, here's a rundown of exactly how MDV works. First, download the app from the creator's website, and maybe consider leaving a little donation for them as some appreciation, um, especially after you've seen this video and you've seen how amazing it is. Then after a quick installation, when you launch the app, you'll be greeted with a window that looks like this. Now, depending on your macOS version, you've if you've opted for the older one, uh, you may see just a pop-up window asking you to hit the big red button. But even if you are on the current version and you're greeted with this UI here, you will still have to hit the big red button before doing anything further. So let's go ahead and hit the big red button. And we see it brings up a list of the volumes currently connected. Our selection here is going to t determine which volumes or which drives MDV is going to scan the Avid Media Files um, on, on those drives. So the Avid Media Files folder, which always sits at the root level of your drive containing all of your Avid Media, it can scan or ignore um, any particular volumes based on your selection here. And bear in mind, this will also determine how long this takes. So if you have a whole heap of drives connected, if you've got like 10 to 20 volumes connected, let me isolate it to just the ones you need that you know host the Avid Media. Though, if you know that your Avid Media is spread out across a whole bunch of drives, then you can leave them all ticked as well, and that's not really going to cause you a problem. It'll just take a little bit longer to scan all the drives, that's all. So once you've made your selection, just hit OK Go, and MDV will start scanning. And once it's finished scanning, MDV is going to show you a pop-up window with a breakdown of all of those Avid Media files, all of those files stored on those drives broken down by file size and by Avid project. It's pretty neat, right? 
And at this stage, we even get the option to export this info out as like a CSV file if you just wanted to catalog all your drives in Avid Media, or if you just want to continue, just hit the Owen Wilson button. Wow. Now at this stage, you'll see the main window populated with all of the Avid Media. Repeat, this is all of the Avid Media across of all of those volumes that you selected. Now, if we want to send a collaborator some of our media or do a backup of, or something like this, then the next step is going to be to filter this media down to just the media that we want for our particular action that we're trying to do. And to do that, just hit the filter button um, up on the top left there, very aptly named. And this is where you'll see MDV really shine and essentially show off all the tools which the Avid Media tool really ought to have. Here in this window, we can filter our Avid Media by Avid Project using the checkboxes on the left. Then up on the upper right, we get options to filter by pre-computes, so render files, imported media, or just audio media. Then just below that, we also have our troubleshooting section, allowing us to filter our selection to just show files that kind of shouldn't be there, files that don't necessarily belong in the Avid Media Files folder structure, especially since some of these files can occasionally cause problems with Avid Reading Media and you know media projects and, and stuff like that, if there's a file in there that doesn't belong. However, it is the lower right option that really shows off MDV's magic, and this is what allows us to filter our selection of files using Avid's bins. Let me show you how it works. So after scanning our volumes and loading all the media, I can click this option here to intersect entire database with bins, which will compare all of the Avid media that I've gathered against this particular bin and filter out any media that that Avid bin doesn't reference. So here I'm doing this operation on a bin that holds a sequence of a specific episode of comedy series that I edited last year. You can see as soon as I select that bin that the media in the background changes and I can see what projects this media ultimately came from, as well as how big my new um, file selection is in you know, gigabytes or, or however, however big your files are. Now, before we go copying or moving this media elsewhere, let me just show you first what else MDV can do with bins. Our next option below here is subtract bin contents from results, which essentially does exactly what it sounds like. It allows us to take away the contents of a bin from the main selection. So say for example, I have a bin here of my latest cut, like I've just loaded of, of this latest version of this sequence um, of this episode. And I want to send it to my editor um, because another editor is also working on the same sequence somewhere else. But I've already done this previously where I've already sent them the media um, of this cut, but like an earlier version of the cut. And since then I've imported new music and I've imported new sound effects and new files and stuff, and they need the updated cut. So I can send them the Avid bin separately so that they have the bin. But with the media gathered from the, the new bin here within MDV, I can then go and select the bin that I sent them previously, referencing that previous cut, and you know subtract that bin's contents from the results. And then what I'm left with here is only the new files, only the new things that I've imported since I last sent it to this other editor. And this will make your upload and your delivery to them much more manageable and efficient. Then lastly, our last option below here is essentially the inverse of this, um, allowing us to add bin contents to results, which again, exactly what it sounds like. Allows us to add one or more bins contents to the selection. So uh, say I also realize that I want to send them all of the sound effects that I currently have available in the Avid project. I can add all my sound effects bins and my music bins or whatever else to this selection and they'll be added to the selection of files there. Pretty awesome, right? Okay, now once you reach this stage and you've gathered all the files that you need to send or archive or, you know, all the files that you want to manage, how do you proceed from there? Well, once you reach this stage, over on the left, you'll see a button called Create Action. Clicking that will bring up the Create Action window, which will present you with options along the left to copy, move, or delete all the media in your current selection. Just select the particular action that you're looking to do, Tick the boxes if you want MDV to create an MXF folder um, once you've copied it um, to, to place it within an MXF folder or pro individual project folders based on the project that they originally came from or my personal favorite, keep last folder name in path, which will preserve any naming conventions or naming scheme that you've had going within the Avid Media Files folder structure. Then once you've made these selections, just hit the select window in order to save a file destination where these are going to be moved or copied to. Not really necessary if you're doing deletion here, but if you're doing copy or move, you just select where it's going. And then at this point, you're going to get a summary in a little message box down the bottom that's going to tell you what action it's going to do, like it's going to copy, how many files it's going to copy. It will give you a full tally, and as well as the file size. 
and it will show you the destination um, path that it's going to copy or move to. This is for you to review before you actually proceed. And you can tell this is a very well thought out developer um, giving you this little preview to review first because there's even a checkbox in the bottom left that you have to click before you can proceed called Yes, I'm Sure. I think this is primarily just in case you've accidentally clicked delete maybe instead of move up the top or, or even move because you know, that might be a pain and you have to move it back. Uh, anything that could throw a whole bunch of Avid Media offline. So it's giving you the option to review exactly what you're doing first and check that yes, I'm sure this is exactly what you want to do before you click that button to go. Then as soon as you do that, it's going to bring up the queue window showing that action in progress, giving you a progress bar and the details of exactly what file it's on, how many files it's copied, as well as a very nice progress bar um, along the bottom. And you can hide this window and then tee up multiple actions, um, one after the other, and they will all just be queued to perform one after the other in a row, and then you can leave it going as well. And there you go, you su successfully managed to manage your Avid Media with MDV. It's a good feeling, isn't it? It really is the perfect way to transfer, backup, or even clear out your Avid Media Files folders. Plus, there's even a few more options that I didn't get to talking about along the left under the Tools menu, allowing you to show a summary of all the media based on projects, um, export your current database view, so export out a CSV of basically all the media that you've currently gathered in the main window, um, as well as stuff like scan just a single MXF folder instead of an entire volume. If you just wanted to scan a specific folder, that's not a problem and you can do that. But I'm sure that all you clever people can figure all that out on your own when you go and have a play with the app. After all, it is free and available at the link that's right down below in the video description. So on you go, go, go check it out, go. What are you still doing here? I mean, don't get me wrong, thank you very much for watching this video. I, I do appreciate it, especially all you Patreon subscribers and YouTube members. You know, you guys rock, by the way. But today, MDV is the hero. So on you go, go check out the app as well as the rest of Valentin's website while you're there. Um, there's some really good other tools there, there as well for free that, that, that he's made for Avid. So, you know, between that and MDV, there's going to be plenty to keep you guys busy and play with until you await the next Avid Assistant video. So I'll go back to what I was doing and I'll see you then. Bye.